Okay guys, welcome back to the garden. I was just out here with you yesterday, just tidying up and doing a few things. And I mentioned my onions and how I need them gone. Well, you guys aren't here to like tie my hands behind my back and say, Rachel, don't, they're not ready yet. So at least what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish harvesting the sterlings cause I'm gonna take you guys in with me today and we're going to make some sweet onion jam. But beyond that, anything close to being ready, I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull. Unless something keeps me from doing it. <laughs> so I'm gonna take you guys with real quick and then we're gonna head into the kitchen and we're gonna make that yummy jam, okay? So this bed is all copra onions. So I'm just gonna walk through. I've talked to you guys about this before and just check for disconnected necks. Um, and my decision today is any necks that are really, really mushy, I'm gonna go ahead and pull them. There you go. Nice little bunch of onions. All right, and that's what I pulled for in that section. That's a really nice one. There's one of my sterlings. So that one I'm definitely using for the jam. Some of these are just small, but they're, they're just gonna be used for cooking through the weeks. Okay, that one had the majority of my sterlings that were left in there. All right, let's go take a look and see what we got and then we'll head in the kitchen and make some sweet onion jam. That's not too bad of an onion harvest and I would say probably a good 40% um, are left in the garden. Well, no, I would say I don't know, it's hard to tell. Maybe 60%. So I've maybe I've harvested 40% with harvesting here and there as they've been dying back. Last, maybe a couple days ago I did quite a large sterling onion harvest. Now this, so I'm excited. Um, we found that the red onions, while they don't get as big, they definitely store longer for us um, over the white onions. This year I'm going growing the yellow onions are copra variety and they're supposed to store even longer. Um, so the white onions, if I have any left, we will dice. Um, I'll just keep them diced and we'll freeze them. If not, they're all going to go to the sweet onion jam. The red onions we like to make pickled onions with and then all the yellow onions we'll use throughout the season and extended season for um, just your standard storing onions. So stay tuned for a future video on how I cure my onions. I'm not gonna go over that today. I just wanna get these in um, for making the jam. All right, this is what I've got that I harvested the other day, the basket full. So we're gonna get to chopping these up um, and then that's really where the steps kick in. So um, I guess what I'll do is I will clean these up, come back and tell you how much cups did I end up with.
Okay, we are back. I have, this is quite a large Dutch oven, completely filled with onions. I have, I think you guys can see yeah, behind me, probably about 15 or so onions left that we'll just use for storing and freezing. I didn't cry too bad using that onion chopper. That is definitely a good tool. Um, if you saw me use that, I think I got a tiny clip in there. I'll leave that link down in the description below. I will let you know as soon as I used it, um, one of the little knobs that holds the lids on did break off, but it's I've still been using it ever since. I think that happened the first time I used it because I didn't have it on right. It was my fault, user problem. So what we need to do now, this is a long process. So if you want to do this, just make sure that you have a good afternoon to do it because we've got to caramelize now down all these onions real good. And I think the first time I saw a recipe similar, now it's not exact, but I saw this uh, needy homesteader, she made it. And it looks so yummy. So I think I've got like, and she didn't include a recipe she referred to Linda's pantry Linda's pantry didn't have the recipe so I went out searching on the internet for a recipe and I think I've got it to where I'll try to do my best to leave it in the um, description below so I think what I've got is the basis of three times the recipe I'm following so I need to get six teaspoons of or tablespoons of butter so one, two, three, four, five, six, to um, cook these down in. Ugh, my butter's frozen. Okay. All right, stick that down in there. Let it melt real good. And then we're gonna turn this on. I'm gonna turn on just low for now, just until that butter melts and then I'll turn up to medium and we will work on caramelizing these down. This will take probably easily 45 minutes. But while I'm doing that, let me tell you some of the other ingredients that you're gonna need in case you wanna make it. Brown sugar, balsamic vinegar. I don't have it up here right now, but I'll go down to the pantry and get some maple syrup, cardamom and cinnamon. And you can add pepper. I don't think I'm going to add pepper. I'll taste it and see. But I think I do want this more on a sweet side than a spicy side. So, um, yeah, I guess I'll bring you back a couple times probably throughout the caramelizing process and give you an idea of what you're looking for. And then once we start adding the ingredients in, we'll get going on this. But I'm excited because as soon as this is ready, you better believe I'm gonna be asking Todd to make some burgers so I can put some of this browned, buttered, yummy onion stuff on my burgers. Okay, I have the butters all melted down now. So the thing about this is you're going to sit here now for 45 minutes or an hour, however long it takes. Now, if you have less than I do, it might only take like 20 to 30 minutes, but for my size batch, definitely probably no less than 45 minutes. So I got a little movie here to play. I'm gonna grab a chair and sit down and just sit here and stir and watch a movie. Well, it has been exactly an hour for the my movie that I've been doing this. And hopefully you can tell I'm probably about halfway cooked down and rendered. So they're just turning the lightest uh, shade of tan, I would say, creamy color. So we got a ways to go yet. I'm enjoying it. It's a good way to do it. Pop on a movie and relax. So I will be back when they're good and ready and we can add some of these yummy ingredients. I believe I have it cooked down to where I need it. I did go ahead and end up adding like three tablespoons of garlic to this. Um, 
Probably if I if you were just making this without canning it where you didn't have to add so much vinegar, I might cook this down a little bit more. But since I need to add vinegar and reduce um just do another reduction, I think they're perfectly fine. They're a nice light caramel brown. So now we're going to add the rest of our ingredients. Okay, we're gonna add three teaspoons of salt, a teaspoon, so three teaspoons of cardamom, now we'll add three teaspoons of cinnamon, we need to add one and a half cups of brown sugar. My goodness, this smells amazing. <laughs> All right, probably six tablespoons of maple syrup. So I'm just gonna eyeball that. I'm gonna do one cup balsamic vinegar and one cup apple cider vinegar. Okay, we're gonna just keep cooking this down now until it's nice and thick. Okay guys, I've cooked it down a, a good bit. It's nice and thickening up and I, I suppose it, after you can it, it thickens up even more. This is my first time making it. So I guess I'm just gonna trust the process. Let me take you down here and show you where I thickened it to. Okay, we are going to fill up our jars. I got miscellaneous jars, mostly half pints. I do have one, um, one pint. And this is not, I never mentioned this. I do not believe that this is a um, studied, researched, approved canning recipe. So use your own judgment if you wanna follow it. Um, I was just watching back Needy Homesteader's video to see if she um, did how thick she cooked hers down before she jarred it up. And I'm, mine's actually a lot thicker than hers was. At least it looked like on film. So I'm going to, um, no, not what I was going to say. What I was going to say is I forgot she had a great idea for using it. Like if you're making a meatloaf to put it on your meatloaf, how good would that be? Um, and then Todd and I were thinking when we were in here smelling how delicious it was, how amazing it would be like on a fancy grilled cheese sandwich or a panini. Um, I bet this is just going to be heaven. So I'm putting it in rather small jars because for the most part it is just Todd and I in the home now. And once you open a jar, you probably want to use it within two weeks. This would probably make a great addition to a charcuterie board if you're um, like doing that for gatherings and appetizers to serve with a soft cheese um, and meat spread on crackers. That would just be really good too. So I just filled them up to a quarter inch of headspace like I would normal jam. So that's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Twelve little jelly jars and four half pints. And then um, I have this that I'm gonna put in the refrigerator. And when this is done canning, maybe that will have time to set up just a little bit and we'll take a look and see how it spreads. Let's get these babies in. 
when you can't find your penny tongs, you have to use regular tongs. I must have accidentally thrown them in the washing machine or dishwasher. Well, I'm going to can these uh, water bathing for 10 minutes. Probably if I was doing pints, I would go 15. That was a long process. Um, I guess I would consider, depending on how well we love it, kind of like our cowboy candy, I might consider this like a delicacy item. Cowboy candy is definitely much easier to make, but uh, it's not that bad when you have something to do while you're sitting there stirring. Once that comes to a boil, I'm going to set the timer for 10 minutes, but let's throw this one in the fridge and let's see how it sets up. Alrighty, we are all set. I got almost 75% of my mess cleaned up while this was canning and I found my tongs. Ooh, so pretty. Todd said it gave him goosebumps when he licked the bowl. <laughs> they said like the sweet and then the savory of the biting into the, one of the onions. So I think that's a pretty good sign. I gotta find something to get on my thingy. There's gotta be a better tool for this. You guys know how to get those lima jigs out. Oh. Gotta be a better way. Todd's holding the camera right now, so I'm gonna tell him, Todd, this took me a very, very long time to make it, so it is not like jalapeno candy that you can eat it and everything. <laughs> it is gonna be considered a delicacy item. Okay. <laughs> when I get done with this, we'll grab the leftovers out of the fridge and see if it's set up at all yet. So I was hoping I had some crackers that I could just, uh, put a little piece of this on. But it's uh, still warm, the one that I put in the fridge. But I wanna show you that you can, it's definitely spreadable. So if you picture like smearing it on a burger or your meatloaf or whatever you wanna smear it on. Pork chops, mm, I bet that would be good. Todd, try bite. Okay, thanks. Mm. Mm -hmm. Lots of good flavors. Yeah, so good. It's very earthy. <laughs> you love that word. Mmm. <laughs> mm. You can really taste the cardamom and the cinnamon. Good job. Thank you. That was a lot of work. It was. <laughs> but I, I got a good movie in. All right, guys. Not that I expect that you want to do this, sit over a stove and <laughs> stir onions for two hours, but I knew it, it was something I wanted to make this year. So it might be one of those things that I just make it when I have a good onion season. Mm -hmm. Talk to you guys later.